Uh, my name is Jamie Alessio. Uh, I am the director of engineering at Urban Footprint. We are uh, based in Berkeley, California. A um, couple things I wanted to cover this morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming on a Sunday morning. Um, but I want to run through what Urban Footprint does, just so you have some context uh, of, of what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not going to go really deep into our product. If that's what you're actually interested in, come talk to me, check out our website. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is how we fit into the OSM ecosystem and what we've been able to do with data uh, from uh, OpenStreetMap. Um, I guess by, by that way, I really want to like, introduce ourselves uh, to this community. Uh, I personally am fairly new to it. Uh, this is my second state of the map, and uh, I feel like I understand about 1% of all the things that are going on um, each year. There's all new, sort of, all new things, um, just trying to keep up with all the new things and catch up on sort of the history of the last uh, 10, 15, 20 years of uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so I'll dive right in. Um, Urban Footprint is a, um, a web-based uh, scenario modeling tool for modeling land use and transportation uh, changes. And so what does that mean? Uh, what, that, what that typically is, is a city or um, a region would be tasked with um, uh, with updating, say, a general plan. Uh, an example is your city might need to accommodate 25,000 more people by the year 2030. Where are you going to put these new residents? Where are they going to live? Where are they going to work? Uh, where are they going to, you know, go to the, go to a park and eat and shop? Um, and then, uh, also importantly, how are you going to get between all these things? Are you driving? Are you walking? Are you getting on transit? Um, and so, what we let you do is you go in and create different scenarios of what you would like the future to look like, what you would like the future of the city to look like, um, and then you can run different analyses to compare the relative costs of those, uh, both financially uh, and in, in time, things like that. Um, the starting point for this is what we call our parcel canvas. Uh, so we have about 100 million parcels uh, in the United States that we've uh, put a um, standard and, or default uh, land use types on. Um, and so this is what we call a building type. Um, that's going to tell you whether it's uh, residential or commercial, um, really all the way down to details, whether it's a single family residential, multifamily residential, uh, that sort of thing. And what that's, what that's going to do is add up and give us uh, population figures and job counts for uh, different, different parcels and bundled up all the way to cities and regions. Uh, with 100 million parcels in the United States, uh, that lets you create a project pretty much anywhere in the United States. Uh, you can log into Urban Footprint, click Create Project, type in the name of a city, and be up and running in a matter of seconds uh, or minutes. Uh, we also aggregate quite a bit of transit data. Uh, this is something that's sort of in the broader OSM ecosystem. Um, we we take uh, national transit uh, data feeds. Here's a view uh, of our information in New York and again in the San Francisco Bay Area, which I'm a little more familiar with. Um, I happen to know this is about 25 different transit operators that get aggregated uh, onto that map uh, for our analysis. So the next big piece of this is as you're planning out scenarios, you're going to want to run analysis against these scenarios. Uh, we have a broad range of uh, things that we uh, analyze, land consumption, energy use, water use, uh, on and on. The things that I really want to talk about today as it relates to OpenStreetMap is anything with the word accessibility or transport in it. Those are the things that uh, are really tied to the OpenStreetMap uh, data. Uh, what's on the screen here is uh, an example of our risk and resilience module. This is a, a view of San Francisco. I think that's Mission Bay uh, showing sea level rise. So we do a little bit of everything. Um, we do uh, uh, sea level rise, fire risk, things like that in addition to these accessibility metrics. I've touched on this a little bit, but what does this really have to do uh, with OpenStreetMap? Um, I think there's a couple, couple of things here that are really important that I'd like to point out. Um, one, the fact that OpenStreetMap simply exists and that it's sort of open by default and it's available to use, um, I think really turns into a lot of unexpected use cases. I think uh, its use in urban land use uh, planning is one of those examples, and I just really want to like call that out. I think there's the case to be made that um, this data is really going to have an impact in helping cities plan land use changes and transportation decisions uh, in the future. 
Um, so it's OSM, it's all the tools around it, uh, all the companies, all the individual contributors. Um, there's also what I would like to uh, bring up as a potentially virtuous cycle here um, where we are working with cities to update uh, their parcel information and they want to run analysis out of that and so they have, a, they have a great incentive to go in and update the map and keep it up to date as well. So that's something I'd like, um, I'd like, I'd like to explore. Um, finally, the things that we can do now in urban footprint, um, they often, particularly related to accessibility, uh, they are things that we measure in sort of minutes and in worst case hours right now, um, but by comparison those things are measured in days, weeks, and months uh, for other things that often require like a team of consultants to get done. Uh, so we're able to take some of these uh, road networks and um, do analysis that just simply is not being done. And when that analysis is not being done, what that means is those uh, impacts and those trade-offs, the costs and benefits of your decisions are really just not on the table for decision makers. They're not there for the professional planners in the room, they're not there for the government officials, and they're not there for community members who are gonna be directly affected uh, by these change. So digging right in. Maybe. Uh, what OSM really provides, and Quan, uh, my colleague Quan gave an excellent talk on this, yesterday is that we have, OSM provides a network graph uh, for accessibility. And this, in my opinion, is really a game changer. Um, one of the things is, I think for a moment how important it is how you move around a city, right? Like that's a, it's a, a defining factor in, in how you experience in the city. Um, you know, how do you get to work? How do you get your groceries? How do you visit a park? How do you get your kids uh, to school? For each community, different things are going to be valuable. Some people are going to really highly value walk access, maybe bike access to things. Others might uh, enjoy a more car-oriented um, uh, land use pattern. But even then, how much are you going to be driving? Do you want to be driving every single trip? Um, and how much is it going to cost, both in fuel cost and time, to do all these things? And these are the sorts of things that we can, we can pull out of the network graph by traversing it um, and really attach uh, these values at an individual parcel level. Um, so I baked up a quick example uh, last night to just show very briefly, and this is a, I'll stress this is a very, a very simple example. Um, you would do much more complex analysis typically as an urban planner uh, in urban footprint. But what I wanted to do, just to prove to myself that, uh, that it was quick and fast, uh, is I created a project in uh, Berkeley, California where I live, and I wanted to see uh, what does walk accessibility uh, to parks look like in the city. Um, so we have what we call the base scenario. That's using that um, parcel land use canvas that I discussed earlier. And uh, ran accessibility analysis. And you can see kind of in the uh, southwest of the city here, there's sort of these red areas that look like they don't have great access to parks. Um, and so I said, hey, why don't I make a scenario and just explore an idea of how could I improve that? Um, so this is a very cheap and inexpensive operation in, in uh, urban footprint. We like to think of it almost like a get branching model. Like branches are cheap, make a lot of them, explore uh, different scenarios and, and play with a lot of ideas. Uh, so what I did here is I very quickly on our base canvas said, hey, select all the surface parking lots in Berkeley, California. These might be good candidates to turn into a park, for instance. Um, and you can see inside this uh, circle here, uh, a very small green park uh, dropped in. I was able to rerun our accessibility analysis and you can see, you know, with a very minor change to sort of land use policy, um, you got a big impact to that community. Now this community has much better uh, walk access to that park. Um, again, we, this is a very small, I've zoomed into an uh, extremely small part of the city, but this is analysis that's being run at the city, potentially even at the region uh, scale. <coughs> Now I want to touch a little bit on what it's like building a product on top of OpenStreetMap and sort of the joys and challenges of doing that. So OSM is a living map, right? So all the contributors are in there every single day updating it. Um, on one hand, that is absolutely amazing. On the other hand, uh, things can change out from underneath us. Um, and so we sort of struggle with this and I, I, have, I have a lot of open questions internally about um, kind of how to, how to think about this. But this is just one example um, where we were able to actually uh, make a very small modification to the map and improve things quite a bit for our analysis and hopefully uh, routing and, and our, our customer. 
Uh, so this is Jacksonville, uh, Florida, you see on the map. One of the notable features of this region is that there's a river kind of running right through the middle of it, which, as you can imagine, limits your uh, accessibility to, uh, to only these bridges. Uh, as we were presenting to a, a customer, we, uh, they immediately pointed out that we had two very disconnected sort of walk networks. Like, it was very clear that you couldn't get from one spot to the other, even though, like, they, they had on-the-ground knowledge and knew that you could walk across this bridge. Um, and so we sort of puzzled us over this for a minute. We thought maybe it was a problem with our code. We went and looked at the OpenStreetMap data, and we found, oh, actually, just there are some missing, some missing uh, uh, ways uh, connecting the network together. Uh, again, my colleague Kwan was able to get in, uh, make a really quick fix, and uh, now, boom, we have like a fully connected network. Um, I would like to kind of point this out as an example. Like, I think to the people in this room and the people at, at this conference, that's sort of a no-brainer. That's not a big deal that you went in and did that. But to the urban, to urban planning community, like the ability to get in and modify the map and modify the existing base conditions and see immediately results in a web browser is really a big deal. Like, I don't think you probably understand how big a deal that is to everyone. Um, so don't take that, don't take that for granted. Uh, so again, with, with a relatively small chain set, uh, we then were able to fully connect uh, this graph in our software, and now we can run, uh, this is another example of walk uh, accessibility analysis uh, in Jacksonville. You can see uh, the red part there on sort of that peninsula, this is walk accessibility to the nearest hospital. There is, in fact, a hospital in that very dark red uh, area there. Uh, and you can see that you, you, can ex you, can, uh, you have walk access to it now from across the, across the river there. Um, so this is just one quick example, um, very small. Um, we would love to do more and more of this. Um, I have some open questions about how we might detect these sorts of things. How can we find places where there might be disconnected networks, things like that. Um, sort of that's an open, open question to, to ourselves and to the group uh, right now. Um, we have a number of interesting challenges in urban footprint and in the urban planning field um, that I think at this point are unique to what we're doing. Um, part of my being here presenting to this is to raise a bunch of questions, ask other people uh, if you've run into these sort of things, if you've talked about this, if you know what tools we should be using. Uh, so one of the things I'd like to cover is uh, right now in urban footprint you deal with the existing uh, condition, sort of the state of the world as it is right now. And we allow you to create scenarios. And right now, we only let you uh, change the land use of existing parcels, right? So you might say this is a, um, like a low density industrial area. You might want to rezone it, upzone it into, you know, for more mixed use, something like that. Um, that's great. We can show that. Uh, we can do all sorts of analysis on this. But what's often happening is there's greenfield development. Um, there might be repurposing a very large, um, parcel into smaller parcel, parcels, and they're going to want to break that up, and then they're going to want to draw roads into it, right? Now, you don't want those roads in OpenStreetMap because they don't exist yet. We might have four or five scenarios where we're playing out different road networks and the different effects of those. Uh, so one of the things that, um, that I'm exploring is how do, we let, how do we let our users do that? I effectively want to create um, give everyone an ID editor where they can modify their own state of the world in every single scenario. Um, as far as I know, I haven't, seen, uh, I haven't seen anyone else doing that. I would love to hear any ideas people have on sort of both manage the, uh, the data of that, um, how to sort of reason about keeping up with all that, that information. <clears throat> uh, another issue that we'll deal with, and I feel like this is uh, slightly more traction that I've seen uh, on this topic, is dealing with historical map data. So a lot of our work will go into a public process and will need to be reviewed over a painfully long period of time. Uh, it might be measured in months, possibly even years, to, uh, to affect some of these changes. Um, again, I'll remind you, some of these, some of these plans that are being developed uh, with Urban Footprint are 20, 30, 40 years out. Um, and so, you know, there, it's a multi-year process. There are teams of uh, consultants and government agencies involved. Um, and one of the things that, that we have as an open question is, uh, how do we deal with, as OSM marches forward, which is what we like to see, and we like to get in and edit the map and um, improve things, um, how does that relate to uh, an analysis that was run and is part of a public review process 
maybe six months or a year ago. So, our, so our, how, do we, how do we snapshot um, the state of the world for each, uh, each user, perhaps each scenario? And how do we keep up with all of that? Um, I've heard some really interesting things here uh, this weekend. Uh, shared streets looks like a promising uh, uh, effort in that, in that space. Uh, I was also really intrigued uh, by Michelle Steigerwald, I believe is how you pronounce that. Um, she gave a lightning talk yesterday on pulling information directly out of uh, the protobuf files. Uh, that, that all seemed fairly promising. Uh, I would love just, again, leave an open question to the group here and the OSM community at large if you have ideas on how to sort of tackle this. Uh, I am all ears. Um, we have a couple other exciting things on the horizon that are kind of uh, tied to the constellation of projects uh, in OpenStreetMap. Uh, we love the building footprints in OSM. I've personally been keeping an eye on uh, a lot of the import efforts around uh, the Microsoft building footprints, uh, data uh, provided. That is a lot of information to keep up with. Um, I would love to talk more to more people about that. Um, but what that does is that gets, gets into OpenStreetMap. It shows up in the base tiles and lets people uh, see the building footprint outlines on top of our parcels um, and that people find that really valuable. Uh, we can also do 3D data extrusion on those to kind of show prototypical buildings on top of the parcels and that really isn't really a nice feature for people to be able to um, understand what, what a place looks like. Um, I, am, I am also involved in uh, the street level imagery. I really love the projects that both OpenStreetCam and Mapillary are doing. I uh, would love to do an integration there. Again, that is a, a wonderful thing for urban planners to be able to, to go in and see what a place looks like, see what a place looks like right now, and then even what it looked like over time, maybe dialing back um, months, potentially years. Um, that's, that's really valuable. And the other thing with that that I want to point out, much like uh, you can go in and edit the OSM data yourself, the fact that you can use a tool like Mapillary um, and just go out and collect the data yourself is extremely powerful. So if uh, a customer wants to, to work in an area that isn't mapped, doesn't have good street level imagery, um, they can just put a phone you know, on the front of their car or their bicycle and go out and collect that and we can get that to show up in the product you know, within a few hours. Um, that, is, that is really powerful stuff for us. Um, we are really excited about all the work going on in raster analysis, so really interesting to talk about urban urban change detection. Um, this is highly relevant to our field of work um, where cities and uh, government agencies are going to want to see where growth is developing. They might have, um, might have plans um, that have been authorized and want to see uh, where growth is actually occurring. Um, and it's amazing what you can do from the satellite, the satellite imagery there. Um, we also, there's nothing about urban footprint uh, that is tied to the United States right now except that our, except our parcel data. Um, we don't have a good source of, of data outside of the U.S. now for parcel housing and employment data. I think uh, the OSM community is way ahead uh, of us there in terms of the, the maps and the networks, uh, drawing the network graphs uh, throughout the United States. Uh, amazing work being done in developing countries for that. Um, I would love to see urban footprint used in those settings. Um, we struggle with on the ground information about uh, the population uh, and employment. Um, the other things that, that I'm always on the lookout for is a lot of exciting stuff here is uh, everybody wants everything faster all the time, myself included. Uh, so we're always on the lookout for new tools, new ideas, new approaches. Uh, there's a lot of really uh, compelling uh, things in this community here. So a couple of other things that I want to end on. Um, I really want to take some time to just, what can we learn from OSM? So we're engaging directly with cities through what we call our civic program. Um, and that is, um, that is a program where uh, cities uh, use Urban Footprint, they provide us their parcel data, and then we, we put it into the tool and then send it back to them and let them go in and edit. Much like you're gonna edit the, the map in OSM, uh, we let you. We let our customers go in and, and edit the uh, the parcels information about housing and employment. Um, and so, we would like there. I think there are a lot of lessons learned for how that process is managed in the OSM community. Uh, in addition, how as cities are doing this, how can we encourage them to actually provide their data to OSM itself uh, to keep that to improve that and keep that up to date um, outside of just the, the parcel information. Um, 
that's pretty much it. I want to just say thank you to the OSM community and kind of introduce ourselves uh, as Urban Footprint. And um, I will take any questions that people have now. Yes, sir. Say that again about the building points, please. Well, if, if you have the attributes or the you know, number of square meters of, of the building as a point, in some ways that could be more value. Right? Yeah, storage area, yeah, fire. Potentially, yes. Like density kind of mm -hmm. number of square feet per acre. Yeah, so I mean, we, so we have, um, uh, you're saying as an alt, uh, building, uh, points of buildings with attributes attached to it for its square footage, potentially its height and things like that. Yeah, we could certainly work with that um, as, a potential, um, as a potential piece of data. I haven't come across that personally. If you know, if you know where that is, I would, I'm, I'm open to that. Um, what I've seen so far is typically the uh, people either uh, manually draw them or uh, there's been various community efforts to import large sets of, uh, of community data. Uh, or of uh, whole city data, so. Uh, what's the underlying uh, routing? Yeah, so really what we're thinking is for the accessibility analysis. Um, I will have to defer to my colleague Quan on that, uh, who presented on it yesterday. Do you have a quick answer for that? Uh, we have our, uh, we don't use any sort of off-the-shelf right? We'll have a lightweight one that we have to take that to the yeah, I think one of the distinction, and correct me if I'm wrong, is like what we're interested in is sort of accessibility of everything to everything. Uh, so some of those routing tools become difficult for us to use, um, where they're more like you know point to point. So. The question was uh, about um, cities providing their parcel data. We send it back, potentially confusing. What are they editing? Uh, so one of the things that we do is that we'll take um, uh, cities, every city, nearly every city has a different way of uh, talking about their land use and categorizing it. Uh, might be zoning codes, things like that. There's no standard across the country um, for how to describe that. So what we do is we take their, um, their land use information from parcels and we sort of crosswalk it to our um, canonical set of default types and attach um, attributes to that. So when we, we go back to them and, and ask them, hey, have we typed this correctly, is the, is the cycle there. Uh, currently, no, we are not doing a lot with the land use uh, attributes in OSM. No, I'm, I would love to learn more about that. I think that falls into that 99% uh, of OSM that is still to be understood and discovered. So, yep. Uh, the question was, in my experience, uh, what are the barriers for cities? Um, I will be very honest and say I am not the best person to answer that. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I have not been in the room and I have not been on those calls. Um, I imagine there's, there's a bit of just educational challenge of just not understanding what, what it is they're doing, what's the value. Um, but I, I honestly don't feel super qualified to answer that one. Yeah, sorry. Any other questions? Yep. The question was, do we ever do uh, regions larger than cities? Uh, yes, we do. So we just finished um, uh, one phase of a project uh, with uh, Central Ohio, um, the MPO there. Uh, I believe it's called the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Council, MORPSI. Uh, yeah, so that was a very large uh, geographic area um, looking at um, uh, different alternatives for um, putting in uh, transit along existing transit corridors. I think they were exploring uh, bus rapid transit and other, other options like that, yeah. Um, as a, um, right now in Urban Footprint, you're limited to about the city scale. Uh, if you just go in and create projects. We use it internally right now for much bigger uh, things. We've done work uh, with the city of Madison and the, and the larger Madison region. Um, we've done work historically in Southern California, um, kind of the whole 
Southern California region. Uh, yeah, it's, it's possible. Um, it starts to, uh, starts to become challenge, challenging just from the data size uh, and processing and getting results back fast enough to the user. So that's, a, that's an area we're definitely uh, working on improving. So. All right, thank you so much.